So this is an unboxing for, obviously, as the title says, the McCulloch MC1375 steam cleaner. Quite the package. So there is one part of the extension for the mop attachment. Get the box out of the way so that there's more light on the part. So here's part of the mop attachment. And another extension for the mop attachment. Instruction manual and scrubby pad. Mm -hmm. Sure it says in the manual. Accessory net. Whatever that means. Stores brushes and other small accessories. Oh, so you can hook it onto the machine, okay. We've got assorted attachments here. Got a nice slip knot here. So we got barbecue scrubber and some regular uh, tip and a regular scrubber. And another regular scrubber. There doesn't, nope, there's no difference between the two regular scrubbers. I forgot to open the cup. This is nothing special, no exciting stuff, it's just measuring cup. Warning maximum fill line right there. And then measures up to 16 ounces, well, technically uh, 18 ounces, I guess, and 500 milliliters. Or technically 600 milliliters. I like how they do it slipknot style. At least I think it's a slipknot if I remember correctly. Big scrubber. They got one sponge attachment. Oh man. It doesn't feel like a sponge, it feels like a scrubby. Like, um, not an SOS pad, but a bright pad or something. Feels very much like a, a scrubby scurry, not a sponge. And I got replacement scrubby. And this here is the mop head attachment. Comes with a nice uh, swivel head that locks into place. So I guess it, this part locks into place so that you can uh, have it just standing on its own and the mop handle won't make it fall over. You got that much free range motion. There's a little bit of tension on both ends. Kind of puts a little bit of pressure on it when you get to the side. Goes all the way down to the sides and all the way up. Locks in place, but as soon as you unlock it, it goes to the sides. And I'm guessing that it has these little hooks here to hook onto the uh, mop attachments. And then the holes here allow the steam to come through. Pretty lightweight too. I'd say quarter to half a pound probably. Uh, maybe one pound. I don't know. Definitely less than uh, two or three. Definitely less than that. And then we have here a shopping bag? Nope. Literally just a storage bag for the steam cleaner. Yeah, if you can call it that. I'd say it's more like a storage bag for the attachments and accessories. And here we have one big scrubber. I'm guessing this is a carpet cleaner because it's got all these little brushes at the end there. Slightly bent. It's got all these little brushes on a grate and it obviously allows the steam come through the middle of this thing. I bet this is like a floor scrubber, not a floor mopper. 
I don't think it's for uh, carpet cleaning. I bet it's for uh, scrubbing floors. And finally the mop attachment. The dark blue has a very scrubby texture, not moppy at all. It's the dark blue bristles are bristles are quite stiff. Uh, seems the light blue and um, green bristles have pretty much the same texture. The green ones are a little bit thicker though, but the dark blue is definitely scrubby. And then this is the part that attaches to the mop itself. I'm guessing this is microfiber that allows the uh, tiny hooks to hook on. And another mop head but without the uh, blue scrubby lines. And let's see, oh yeah the green here is definitely very soft while the blue is kind of scrubby, it's kind of stiff. But the green is really soft, I could use it as a towel. But I wouldn't want to use the blue rose as a towel. It's a little bit too stiff. Triangular attachment for an upcoming attachment. I'm guessing this is another scrubby because of all the bristles. And we're almost to the steam cleaner itself. And here's the triangular attachment. The steam obviously comes out the bottom there. The bottom has holes in it. Steam comes out of. And this I'm guessing attaches to a triangular attachment. Let's see if I can figure this thing out. I got it. Kind of a little bit tough to clip on. You're not really sure when it actually clips on, but it does. I'm guessing it's just to add double scrubbiness to the job. And the the light doesn't really show you, but the holes there, there's no holes, it's just solid plastic. And then the attachment to the uh, front of the hose. Steam comes out that part. This clips onto the hose and allows the steam to come out and you can put uh, different attachments on the front there. And we've got some sort of scraper of some kind. And the kind of blocks the light, but yeah, the uh, steam comes out that little nozzle and gets trapped under this thing, which has a bevel on it. So I'm guessing it's for scraping some sort, get deposits off the floor. And here be the grand finale. Okay, finally got all the wrapping off the hose. Oh wow, it's very rubbery. It has a very obvious rubber feel to it. Like, um, almost latex. Oh, a nice rubber grip on the handle too. You can see the rubber grip starts there and ends there. It's a very nice rubber grip. Not nice enough that it actually provides cushioning or padding, but you can very much tell it's rubber. And I guess you just you can pull the trigger or you could pull it and lock it in place. Yep. And then press the other side to unlock it. So pull the trigger, lock in place, unlock it. Very handle has very nice feel. And uh the hose is supposed to be insulated and it has a very rubbery feel. It's definitely rubber. And from the picture on Amazon, it didn't look six, ten feet long, but in real life, it's obviously ten feet long. So, let's see if we can disconnect the hose here. I don't think it disconnects. Nope. Or it's just really super tight. 
you got the uh, pressure adjustment here so you can have less pressure or more pressure it's already at max and then this is the pressure gauge here to tell you how much pressure is uh, building up I think it's like 40 psi or 12 psi I'm not sure I'll put it in subtitles you got the fill up cap here which it has a little warning symbol on it to tell you that the contents the water is under pressure and you have to unscrew it a lot of times oh yeah some nice hardware right there so uh, there's a spring inside which I'm guessing is a valve that doesn't allow the pressure to leak out but uh yeah you just put water into that hole and it's a funnel see there's a funnel so the water will just come down the sides if you don't happen to get in the hole I'll post the uh, tank capacity and the uh, running time so the max running time is at the lowest pressure using this control knob here lowest pressure is the longest run time it can have which I think is like 90 minutes and at max pressure the longest run time is 45 minutes I think and I'm guessing these are to hold the cord they don't adjust I'm wondering why yeah it's does not move so cord has to wrap around something oh cord wraps around these I guess because there's a you can barely see yeah you can see the hooks it's the same thing on top and then the vents here are just decorative no venting just plastic pretty lightweight empty on off button and little swivel wheels tiny little slip swivel wheels the unit itself the unit itself measures about 11 and a half inches at its tallest by 14 and a half inches long by 11 and a half inches wide and it's very lightweight empty probably five or ten pounds empty let's undo the cord here very heavy duty cord it uses 1500 watts of electricity if I remember correctly the little stickers on the bottom here 1500 watts very long cord I'm wondering how I'm supposed to wrap the cord around this thing I'm sure it's in the instructions here's a quick little chart to uh, show you what the different attachments are designed to be used for or could be used for well that's the end of the English version of this so it doesn't tell you how to wrap the cord up I'm guessing you can wrap it around here and that wouldn't make these sense for this so and they don't pull out they don't swivel does the cord even go around them yep the cord kind of locks in place well, what's for? I won't swivel either direction. Hmm. Interesting. I'm going to give this a go and see how well it does. Although, I'm going to read through the manual real quick to make sure that it doesn't need a full tank on first startup. Nope, does not have to be filled to a certain level for first startup. See if it's turned on. It is not. 
So, turn it on and watch the pressure gauge fill up. Okay, well, it seems to be maintaining steady pressure now. Like, just before it clicked off, like, right about here is when it clicked off. And that took about five minutes. So, so much for the 15-minute warm-up time. Let's check it out. Oh, wow. That's a bit of pressure. Look how much... Pressure it's dropped already. It has foam coming out of it. I'm guessing factory chemicals. Oh yeah. Lots of factory chemicals in there. Oh yeah. If you're looking to humidify a room, no matter how large it is, this is a very good product for that. I don't see it increasing in pressure, so I'm guessing it doesn't increase in pressure until the needle goes all the way down the green. There's more foam. Probably because of all the steam condensing. So, there we go. The, um, this part right here is getting a little bit warm, but the handle feels just fine. I'm getting a bunch of water droplets on my steamer. Yeah, it sounds out a lot of water. Definitely sounds, sends out a lot of water droplets. You can see them on my bed there. The uh, handle is still not getting hot enough to touch. The hose is nice and warm though, but I'm pretty sensitive and it's not too hot to touch for me. But definitely sends out quite a few water droplets. I'm going to put it on the, uh, oh boy, try and take the nozzle off, the tip off, but that's pretty hot. I'm going to connect the handle directly to the mop head, if I can. I'm going to take off this little attachment. Hopefully not burn myself. There. Shortest mop handle ever. I have no idea what I'm doing, so bear with me. Por favor. I'm guessing you just put it on and sort of like press it in. Yeah, that's pretty much it. You just put it on and press it in. Let's see how pretty it looks. That don't sound pretty. There we go. It's got gas! There we go. Ooh, that's hot and moist. See how it looks coming out of the nozzle like this. It's a gun. It literally has the tiniest bit of kickback. Oh, 
I used all the water. It's also a good idea to turn off the machine before filling it. Almost looks like an afterburner. Look at my pressure drop. It's spring loaded so when you press it down it relieves more pressure. You should definitely allow time for it to cool. I'm waiting for it to pop up on me any second. There we go. Most definitely allow time to cool for it to cool. The instructions that probably say 20 minutes because that's what my distiller takes. That's what the instructions on my st distiller say is to wait 20 minutes. I think I remember it saying it's able to handle 45 ounces, but we'll give it 16 anyway. It looks like it could handle more, so I'm going to give it more. Oh no, there's still some room in there. Yeah, there's still room. But 32 ounces is quite enough. At least to play with anyway. Turn it on and build up pressure. Already preheated so it should be easy to do. Oh and by the way, these tires here are made of actual rubber. Kind of like a plastic rubber combination. But it definitely feels like they could get a grip on some like tile floor or something. I can hear it boiling inside. <gasps> I figured it out. These hooks. There. 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 Accessory net. I didn't even need a manual for that. Building up pressure, building up pressure, building up pressure. You can probably hear it now. It actually produces steam despite having low pressure. So you can see low pressure. And it's still producing steam. Still producing steam, ultra low pressure. It's probably just barely keeping up with it. Let it build up for a bit more. The handle is getting really warm still, but still not hot enough not to handle. And now it's at its minimalist, so try it again. Oh yeah, way more pressure. Not a whole lot of steam, but definitely some more pressure. I've noticed it can almost hold its own, so I'm going to wait until it gets up to the yellow and clicks off, and then I'm going to see how long I can produce steam for before it has to click back on. I'm guessing... Because it's already full of water, or almost full, it stopped right there because the sensor inside, or me mechanism inside, detected that there was enough pressure that if it had any more pressure, it would damage itself. Because there's so little room for the air pressure to be in. So, at almost full capacity, I'm guessing that's the max pressure it's allowed to be at. So, because I haven't had battery power in my stopwatch since 2008. I'm going to be using my mom's watch to time how long it takes to run out of steam pressure. So starting when the second hand hits the six.
I don't know how long that's been. I haven't been keeping track of the watch for that long. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to run out of water before I run out of pressure. It just would not run out. Now my room is hot and muggy. Man, I am sweating. I must have increased the humidity by 20% in two minutes. Let's see if there's any condensation on my wall. Yep, my wall, my wall is certainly sweating. And the handle is warm, but not hot. Now I'm pretty sensitive to pain. This is really warm, but I can still hold on to it. It's like, yeah, that's really warm, like hot cup of tea warm. But it's not hot. But the handle is still comfortable to hold on to. Very good activity to use this during the winter time. Your hand wrapped around this will heat you up.